friends. This is a plant. And I'm not allowed to have those because I only end up killing them. I've killed aloe, I killed cacti, I've killed succulents. Once I got an orchid as a present, 48 hours. It's like I have the opposite of a green thumb. Is it? Is it a brown thumb? Guys, it's 2017, you can't say that. It's certainly not a genetic thing. I mean, my grandparents on my dad's side were farmers and somewhere back on my mom's side of the family, you could say they grew things too. So my dad picked up the agricultural bug too. He's always had a soft spot for farms. He's read a lot of books about cows and going back to the land and stuff. I think in his head, my dad's a gentleman farmer with like acres and acres of land to grow things and let the dogs run around. But in absence of that, he always had a plot at the local community garden. Not like local, local. You had to drive across the highway to get there, which I know because I went there a lot. But it was there that he conjured up enough vegetables to feed my entire family and a surplus of rabbits with nothing but like this horrible clay soil and magic and time. I loathed it mostly. It was hot and buggy and decidedly without internet and like, I'm not cut out for manual labor. So when it was my job to pull weeds out from their roots, I kind of just like pulled some of the leaves off the top and called it a day. But I could forgive it because it had its good points too. There was Queen Anne's lace growing all along the path and fat bees bumbling around people speaking in Spanish and Hmong. And then in the right part of the season, I could stuff my pockets full of sugar snap peas and green beans picked right off the vine. By college, years after I'd even half-assedly pulled some weeds, I missed things that tasted like a vegetable. And along with the eco-friendly activist club and the dentistry school for some reason, we built a little community garden on campus, about a dozen raised beds, and one of them was mine. My parents came down one weekend to help me move apartments, and my dad helped me plant all my veggies. I had peas and corn and beans and carrots and lettuce and peppers and potatoes and soybeans and kale. And I had a watering schedule where I went and watered everybody's garden on Wednesdays, and then the rest of the week, some mysterious faceless dental student had me covered. And within a couple of weeks, there were pale green things shooting up all over the garden, and they grew up into stalks and bushes and vines out of dirt and mostly nothing. But I didn't stop hating the weeding or the watering or the general being responsible for another living thing. Like, I put in the bare minimum of care. But my garden rewarded me for it anyway, with plants hanging heavy with more veggies than I cooking for one in my studio apartment could have ever eaten alone. And once on a morning watering shift, I found a little nest of baby bunnies hanging out in one of the more neglected gardens. And I kind of understood why anyone would try to grow things. When the cold came, of course, everything died and with it, the family farming bug. I haven't been successfully able to keep a plant alive for more than a couple weeks since then, but maybe it's something like seeds that can sit unused with all that potential, dormant for years, and then grow again with just a little soil and magic and time. All of this to say, I'm considering getting a fern. So in the comments, tell me about a plant that means something to you. Also, I'm gonna be at VidCon later this week, so tell me if you're gonna be there. Tell me if there's anybody that you want me to try and collab with while I'm there. Tell me if you wanna collab while I'm there. Subscribe if you like, you can find me anywhere on the internet at It's Radish Time, and I will see you next week. Bye.